to Basingstoke, cold, winter, windy almost out there. Don't want to be out there, but it's not that bad really. But it's dull. The light is dull. It take a lot of effort to get out there and think of what kind of picture to take. Oh, we're allowed outside. You've got your one walk a day with the pandemic, so very challenging times to be a photographer. But, you know, there's always options if you plan, think, and have, uh, you know, things to hand, kit to hand. There are ways of uh, finding things to do. But anyway, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a video. That's my project for the day. And it's going to be talking about what I call the Triangle of Truth which my son has helpfully scrubbed out. Well, let me redo it. So the triangle of truth, I'm gonna call it. So at the bottom is gonna be your oomph. The oomph to go out and do stuff. The preparations you do and you know the, the things that make you, the enthusiasm, how you enable yourself to go out and take a picture. That's really one of the most important things about photography because it's all good and well having all the kit, but if you're not going out there using it, you're not infused, then you're not taking pictures. And the two things that kind of bear down on your oomph, other than your latent laziness or whatever you have that's inherent in your genes and your upbringing, whatever that is, your coffee or your coffee intake, there are two things that actually attack your oomph. One is actually your own visual kind of vocabulary, how you actually don't see things around you. And that's because you're, uh, you've got a, everybody has a visual vocabulary and they don't actually, you need to see it to be able to break from it. And that's something we're gonna go into at some point. And the other thing is technical know-how. So that's the triangle. Technical know-how on one end, there's the visual vocabulary on the other, and they bear down on your enthusiasm. And this is why people actually lose interest in photography. They get the kit, they think, you know, I'm not getting good pictures, I get more kit. Uh, and they still don't take good pictures. And some people are actually uber keen and they have the kit, but they still don't take good pictures because they don't have that understanding of visual vocabulary and uh, how you can break it. You need to understand your own visual vocabulary before you can break it. And so let's go around the triangle and go through a little bit more about what I mean about each node on that triangle. So let's go on the easiest one, which is the know-how. Know-how, a camera is just like a car, so it has some really basic things that all cars have in common, which is an accelerator, brake, and the steering wheel. Now, the problem with uh, cameras are that most camera manufacturers hide all that basic infrastructure of, a, of the, the basic bare bones of what a camera just does, really. And it has all these features and buttons and menus and things, and it all becomes very confusing. But you really have to just master very simple things in, in a camera to really understand the whole thing. And for me, the analogy is like, say, imagine getting into a car and you can't find the brake or the accelerator or the steering wheel because there's so many features and sub-menus and everything. But really, if you could just clear all that out of the way and understand that at the very bare bones, at the, at the core of it all, it's very easy to use a camera and it's as difficult as dri learning to drive a car so it's awkward, you practice, but you'll get there. Just don't get diverted by the complexity of cameras because that's, that's enough to put people off. So really believe and understand that there really are some bare bones stuff in a camera that is just equivalent to driving a car. No different to learning how to drive a car. Once you learn it, you can just totally forget it. and. That will help your enthusiasm when you don't get mired in the detail of the camera and you just can concentrate on the visual vocabulary end, which is the creative end of taking pictures. So first have faith that you can learn and B, everything is available on YouTube. I'm really not going to get into teaching people about shutters and apertures and stuff like that. There's great stuff on, the, uh, on YouTube. I'm always going on YouTube myself for little bits and bobs and there's so much out there, you really have no excuse not to know the basics of photography. So that's one node, that's knowledge, know-how, and don't let it interfere with your enthusiasm by getting mired into the detail, which is also a problem with manufacturers because they actually add more detail into a camera, which actually people find confusing. 
let's move on to the visual vocabulary. The interesting thing about visual vocabulary is that it's quite interesting how the, the eye is actually how it evolved. So, you know, it's a, it's a processing machine on so many different levels. It's not just, you know, light coming into your eye and then you see it. It's, there's so many interesting things about vision, like, did you know that in the back of your head where your visual cortex is in your brain, the biggest input into the processing of what you see is itself. It's not the information coming from the retina. That's, the, that's uh, you know, a small part of it. The large part of vision is actually regurgitating what, what it's seen from the retina and extracting from your memory and awareness of other things where your body is and everything and churning it in and in and out of your brain. And this is where visual vocabulary becomes embedded in us so that we're, we're already seeing without seeing. So that's where the problems start with being creative in photography. You have to understand that you're already introducing a lot of meaning into the information that comes from your eye. And unless you can see that, understand that, then you won't be able to break it and do other things. And other interesting things that I've uh, learned about the eye is how the basic infrastructure of vision, how it evolved, affects how we see a picture. So it's interesting to think that mammals actually evolved from night time and because they evolved to move around at night time, we actually find shadows really important for us. So shadows moving are, are, are really quite consequential for, the, for, for a mammal to survive. Um, you know, yeah, that could be danger. And um, so movement in black and white images feel very consequential, more consequential than say a color image. See, a color image is more about fruit gathering because it's a positive thing whereas black and white is really almost based in dangerous things you know it's almost like you know something moving in the shadow at night time could be the end of our life so that goes down to a very core area called the quadra gemina or something i think which really deals with rapid in interest in a shadow moving or darkness moving and there are parts of the eye that are actually just built to see shadows, you know, and darkness moving. So it's not just about light. Darkness is just as important. And then colour comes from just looking for fruits. So you can see the, what they call it, colour opponency. It's quite interesting. So colour is more positive because you're looking at yellow and blue. You don't get a yellowy blue and you don't get a bluey yellow because they're in the eye. They kind of oppose each other so that we can see fruits against a blue sky. And then there's red and green. You know, you don't get ready green and ready uh, greeny red because we're trying to see green fruits with a bit of red on them. It's really important to be able to see them, even though red and green are quite close to each other. So it's quite interesting that how our evolution creates the vision and the baggage we have for vision, whether it's learnt through cultural processes that we have this visual vocabulary or through the evolutionary process where we're given hardware to look in a certain way. It's really consequential to try and dismantle the way we see and understand the way we see so that we can move forward and be creative because you'll only be creative if you can actually understand that. Either you do it unconsciously or do it consciously but that's one of the most exciting parts about photography for me. And oomph for me is just really common sense stuff. Like literally the most important part of getting a good picture is, is actually getting out of bed and doing something. Finding patterns in life around you, like when are people around in town? When is the sun up? When is the moon around? How long is the day? What time is sunrise? What time is sunday? You know, have, have I eaten enough so I, can I go a whole half day without actually you know, trying to go, go for a recess for eating, you know, all these kind of simple things about logistics and actually getting you out there to make you lucky, you know. 
landscape photographers who are really good don't, don't just snap. They, they sit around for hours and hours and travel for half a day to get a good picture. Now I'm not saying that every picture should be like that, but you need to make yourself lucky by actually pre being prepared. You know, you've got to have the batteries charged, you've got to have the cards, you've got to have, you know, the kit ready to use, you've got to plan events, you've got to talk to people, you know, find opportunities by engaging with things around you, people around you, events around you, engaging with where, where the planets and, the, and, the, and the, uh, you know, where the sun is, the moon is, where, what, what time of day you get up and all those kind of things. So that's my triangle of truth. And that's all I've got to say today. And the rest of the day I'm going to be drawing stars. Okay, have a nice Sunday. Will do, Ryan.